The Longest Day, Celebrating the Summer Solstice, by Wendy Pfeffer, illustrated by Linda Bleck. As summer approaches in the northern part of the world, bison shed their heavy coats. Mountain goats climb to sunny pastures, and with a splash of color, butterflies emerge from silky cocoons. This time of year, the sun appears early each morning, rises higher into the sky each day, and lingers long into evening. Days become longer and warmer, and crops grow and ripen. Families fill playgrounds and parks. They picnic under an umbrella of green leaves, play baseball, volleyball, or just nap in the warm sunshine. Children can ride bikes and play outdoor games for hours in the evening with the sun still in the sky. Fall equinox. Day and night equal. Fall, nights longer than days, days getting shorter time to harvest. Winter solstice, the shortest day with the least sunshine. Winter, nights longer than days, Days getting longer, spring is coming. Spring, days longer than nights, days getting longer, seedlings sprout. Summer solstice, the longest day with the most sunshine. Summer, days longer than nights, days getting shorter, crops grow. Around June 21st, the first day of summer, as Earth moves in its orbit, the northern half of the Earth tilts towards the sun and so it gets more sunshine than the southern half. The first day of summer, called the summer solstice, has more daylight hours than any other day of the year, making it the longest day. The sun, spreading warmth and light, has always been important to people. Warm sunshine and more daylight hours make good growing season to supply life-giving food. Sun was so valuable to people who lived in ancient times that some considered it one of their gods. Egyptians believed their sun god Ra sailed in a golden boat across the sky. In Mesopotamia, the people imagined their sun god, Shanash, had a chauffeur drive him across the sky. Each morning, Shanash would come out the door of the east and travel across the sky to the door of the west. Then Shanash would travel underground all night to arrive at the door of the east again in the morning. Greeks thought their sun god Apollo drove a chariot through the heavens and the sun was one of its blazing wheels. Early people observed and recorded how the sun appeared to move through the sky. They used many methods to chart the sun's path. Ancient Greeks measured the shadows of a tall pillar. The shortest shadow occurred on the longest day in summer. When the midday sun was high in the sky, the longest shadow appeared on the shortest day in winter when the midday sun was low in the sky. The Chumash Indians of California painted a sunburst around an opening in the ceiling of a cave. They called it the House of the Sun. During mid-afternoon on the longest day, the sun's rays steamed through the opening. When sunlight beamed on a quartz crystal wedged in the ground, the Chumash Indians welcomed the summer solstice. 5,000 years ago in England, people began building structures to mark these special times of the year. One prehistoric monument, Stonehenge, consists of a circle of stones. Some line up with the summer solstice sunrise and others line up with the summer solstice sunset. Over a period of 1500 years, workers hauled and rafted heavy blue stones and sandstones over 100 miles to Stonehenge. Some stones were as long as a school bus and weighed 50 tons. That's heavier than eight large elephants. Using rollers, ramps, and ropes, they set each massive stone in place. No one knows who these amazing builders were or how they moved such gigantic stones such long distances, but we do know they did it to celebrate the sun. Similar yet puzzling stone structures cover Mystery Hill in New Hampshire. Some call it America's Stonehenge. While Stonehenge is neatly arranged, Mystery Hill is just a jumble of stones, many etched with ancient inscriptions. Some scholars think it was built like an unknown civilization between 2,000 and 5,000 years ago. Early on June 21st, visitors flocked to Mystery Hill. They watched the sun come up over the sunrise stone, marking the beginning of the longest day. 
In Wyoming, during mid-June, thousands of people hike up Medicine Mountain to see the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. Scientists and archaeologists believe the Plain Indians constructed this 80-foot wide circle of rocks between 200 and 800 years ago. 28 spokes radiate out of a central hub. One spoke points to the summer solstice sunrise, another to the summer solstice sunset. For 700 years ago in Lithuania, villagers celebrated the longest day by washing their faces with morning dew, then singing, dancing, and feasting. They coated a wheel with tar, covered it with straw, and set it ablaze on top of a hill to symbolize the sun at its highest point in the sky. They then rolled it down the hill toward a river to symbolize the sun moving through the sky. If the wheel was still burning as it hit the water, they believed the summer sun would produce a bountiful harvest. Today, Lithuanians and many other people in many countries celebrate St. John's Day on June 24th with festivities from sun up to sundown. The days around the summer solstice have been called midsummer since long ago times. Since June 21st is midway between May and August, it's called midsummer. One midsummer eve, ancient German Germanic tribes built fires. They thought fire would help the sun warm the earth and drive away unwanted spirits. They believed the bigger the fires, the farther away those spirits would move. Couples jumped over the fire hoping that summer crops would grow as high as they jumped. In Bohemia, now known as the Setch Republic, girls made wreaths with flowers. Boys collected sticks and branches and built a bonfire. Girls stood on one side of the blaze and boys on the other. Each girl held her wreath up and looked through its center to decide whom she might want to marry. Then she threw her wreath across the fire to that boy. They believed the singed wreaths would protect them against sickness the next year. On land that lies above the Arctic Circle, the sun shines for 24 hours on June 21st. In Sweden, it is called the day that never ends. During the Middle Ages on Midsummer Day, Swedish families decorated houses and barns with greens to bring good fortune and health. They stripped branches off a tall spruce tree and decorate it with garlands of flowers. Today in Sweden, every town sets up a midsummer pole strewn with streamers, flowers, flags, and greens. Villagers wear folk costumes, play traditional music, and dance around the pole. Young people each pick eight different flowers. They put them under their pillows at night, hoping to dream about their future spouse. Each year, the people of Nome, Alaska, celebrate the summer solstice with a midnight sun festival. On June 21st, the sun shines for more than 22 hours there. People parade, barbecue chicken, and dance in the streets. If the frozen ice is broken up in the Bering Sea, the annual polar bear swim is held. Brave people dip their entire bodies in almost freezing water to celebrate the longest day. Many people enjoy the heat of summer and outdoor summertime activities and sports. On hot summer days, children can wiggle wet toes in squishy sand, giggle with friends under a sprinkler, and grow sunflowers that turn slowly all day to keep facing the sun. At twilight, that time between the daylight and darkness, after the sun sinks below the horizon, children can gaze at a few bright stars twinkling above and plan another day of fun in the sun. During the hot weather, the days shorten and summer soon ends. Leaves fall, cool winds blow, bison start growing heavier coats. Mountain goats wander down to windless pastures and monarch butterflies migrate south to the warm skies of Mexico. The earth continues its orbit around the sun until the next June when people in the northern part of the earth will once again enjoy the summer solstice and the longest day of the year. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more monthly books.